Alright, so our first step is going to be picking out our barrel. Now there's a couple of types of barrels out there, or 55 gallon drums. One of them has a welded on style lid, has a couple of bung holes in the top. It's not the type of barrel we use for to build our barrel barbecues. So make sure you don't grab it, don't bring it home, we don't want it. The second type is the type with a lift off style lid like that. That's what we use. Make sure you find a good quality barrel. There's used barrels or you can get them reconditioned. That's what we use when we sell them. The used barrels you can find at a food manufacturer or a salvage yard or a chemical company. The reconditioned barrels typically are found through container companies. Now you can look online or there's one that sells them at the big popular auction website. What you're looking for is a UN recertified barrel. They come burnt blast, pressure washed, then they repaint the outside and they leave the inside raw steel which is exactly where your barrel is going to need to be before you start cooking in it. So go ahead, search those criteria, or find your barrel used and get it ready to go and we'll move on to the next step. Alright, so in this step we're going to take a trip to the hardware store. Let's make sure and write all this down so we don't forget any of it. We are going to need three 36 inch rods like this. These are cement form rods, so go ahead and pick up three of those. We're going to need one one inch steel hole drill bit that will look like that. This is the type that I use. You need to drill 14 holes in your barrel. So one steel hole drill bit at one inch. We'll need to get a rope hook. This is found in the rope and chain section. This will go on our lid. It's used to hang the lid on the side of the barrel. So one of those for your lid. In the barbecue section, see if you can find a temperature gauge. Something with like a one inch stem on it. Nothing that sticks out real long because this is going to be sticking into our barrel. So just a temp gauge for the side of your barrel. You're going to need two six inch handles. They look something like that. You can find these in the pool or the handle section near the doors or the knobs. Um, you're going to need hardware for these. It doesn't matter what color you get as far as I'm concerned. Um, the hardware you need is a 3 quarter inch number 10 screw. You're going to need enough for two handles, one to go on the side and one to go on the lid. Also, if you want to build your own hooks or fashion your own hooks, I use 1 8 inch stainless steel. It cleans up nice, it's durable. Um, they come in 36 inch or 48 inch lengths. Get yourself some 1 8 inch stainless steel rod to fashion your own hooks. Or another option to fashion hooks is uh, this is a kebab for skewers. We fashion that into a hook that might work out for you. Make sure you're going to get enough. The maximum amount of hooks we use in a barrel at a single time is 15. Another option uh, or another thing you're going to need to get is a, a hook to lift your disc up. Now this is a boot hook. We found these in a boot store. They come two to a pack. This has been working out real great. If you want to fashion your own, go ahead and get yourself a piece of 36 inch stainless steel or black steel or rebar and we'll tell you later on how you can fashion your own lifting hook. Another thing we're going to need to get is a grill grate. When we modify our grill, lift our heat up, we can cook on it just like that. So go ahead, you might have one laying around if you don't. Get yourself one anywhere from 22 to 20 inches. Make sure it's going to fit inside your barrel. Another thing we're going to need is a piece of H back duct work like that. This is going to be our riser, so if we need to lift our heat up, we need to have it at least 20 inches in length, and the diameter can be 7, 8, 9 inches. Any of that is fine. Um, an alternate to doing that H back duct is a piece of stainless steel just like that. Same thing, 20 inches by maybe 24 inches, something you can roll up, you can use that as well. Some other things you're going to want to get, um, I use a soft tape measure like this, it's a seamstress style tape measure to measure my barrel to mark where my holes are going to be. And I have a marker obviously to mark all my holes and I use a pin and a hammer to smack my holes so I don't drift off when I'm getting ready to drill them. So go ahead. Get the things you don't have or the things you're going to need and we'll move on to our next step. Alright, so now we're in the next step. Finding a farm field disc that looks like that. You can find a used one or you can find a new one. I always try to find used ones. I like to renew resources whenever possible. If you can't find a used one on a farm, go ahead and order a new one. You can either order one or find one at a tractor supply company. Um, look up. Uh, farm field disc or tilling disc in your search engine. 
Now, our discs are anywhere from about 18 to 20 inches in diameter, and it's best if you can find one that has the one and a quarter inch axle hole in it. It's a little bit easier to weld when you need to have it welded. So, once we have our disc, we need to find a welder. Now, our welder needs to put a six inch shaft right into the middle of our disc and have them welded in there. And then I use a piece of chain or a piece of metal rod can be welded into the top for our meat, our hook to pick it up and lower it into the barrel barbecue. So go ahead, have that welded into your disc and we'll be ready to move on to our next step. All right, so now we need to mark and drill 14 holes on our barrel. Now we've got three holes on the top on one side, three holes on the top on the other side for a total of six on top and then eight on the bottom in a pie shape all the way around. Let me tell you exactly where those holes need to be. What we'll do is I'll measure the circumference of my barrel and make a mark on the top on one side with my marker. Take that number, cut it in half and make a mark on the other side so I know my holes are directly across from one another. Once I've got those two marks, then I measure each way six inches and make a mark on the top of that barrel. Repeat that same step on the other side. Now, the next step is to take that mark and measure down five inches on each one, exactly five inches to the center. Same thing on the other side. Then I'll go ahead, take my pin and my hammer, and I'll snap each one of those so I know when I'm drilling, my drill won't drift off and I'll have them exactly where I want them. Then I'll go ahead and flip my barrel over. Do the same thing again, measure the circumference of my barrel. It might be different, you never know. It's usually 71 to 72 inches though on these steel drums or 55 gallon barrels. Now I need to put eight holes. So if you divide eight by 72, it's usually about nine inches. Sometimes it's a little less. You go about eight in every seven, eight inches and make a mark. Again, my barrel's upside down, I make a mark every eight and seven eighths or every nine inches all the way around. Then I'll go ahead and take my tape measure and measure down three inches and make a mark. Next one, make a mark all the way around my barrel so I have eight marks. Then I'll go ahead and grab my hammer and my pin and smack each one of those so I make a little dent so I know exactly where my drill needs to be. Then. I go ahead, get my drill, and start drilling each one of my holes carefully, slowly. Once a hole is drilled, what I'll do is I'll file it while my drill bit cools down. Drill another hole, file it, and I'll go ahead and repeat that all 14 times, and then my barrel is set to go to the next step. All right, so now we need to put our handle and our temperature gauge in. Our rod holes, as you can see, I put a rod in here. Hopefully you can see that. It's going through this way. So on the side of that, I will put my handle and my temp gauge in. What I'll do is I'll go down about an inch and put my handle on right there below the upper middle rim. Then my temp gauge will go up about an inch, same place, right on that upper middle rim. I put them right next to each other. This handle makes it nice. You can pick the barrel up and move it pretty easily. Also, I use it to hold my rods when I'm cooking if I need to do a modification on my grill. So it's real simple. What I'll do is I'll set my handle, mark my holes, hit them with the pin, then just about an inch up in the center, I'll hit it with the pin for my temp gauge. I'll drill the appropriate sized holes and go ahead and set those right there on the outside of the side of my barrel. All right, so a quick little step we need to take is putting our handle on our lid. Simply find the center of your lid, set your handle, mark your holes, and drill the appropriate size holes. Then, once you have your holes, put your hardware in and get your rope hook. Use the top hole on your rope hook, put the handle screw through there and there, and set your rope hook on there. Tighten them up, your lid's all set to go. It's a quick, simple step, but it's important, and then we'll move on and show you the accessories. All right, so we've affectionately named our barrel the Hook and Cook Barrel Barbecue. Why? Because we hook our disc and lower it in, and we hook our meat and hang it in for the duration of its cooking time. Now, quick safety note. Whenever we put together our disc, or the shaft on our disc, or our meat hooks, we never use galvanized steel inside the barrel. Outside's fine, but a friend told me that galvanized emits a little bit of a gas, and you don't want it inside your barrel. So, let's get to our hooks. One kind of hook we use is our meat hook. 
Now, you can buy meat hooks online, go to your search engine, put meat hook in, a couple options will show up. What you want to do is get a meat hook that has about six inches from bend to bend, be blunt on one side and pointy on the other. 15 per barrel, so if you're going to build two barrels, get 30. Um, bend the pointy end of the hook out. When you're hooking your meat to hang it, it's easier if it's got a little bit of a outward bend on it. It makes it easier to hook your meat. If you want to make your own hooks, like I said, get a 36 inch or a 48 inch length of 1 8 stainless steel rod. These are sturdy enough to hold anything you're going to hang in there. Um, same thing, 5 to 6 inches from bend to bend and then you need to put your own point, bend it out a little bit. That'll work great. The other type of hook we use is the hook that we hook and lift our disc with. This is real easy to make. Get yourself a 36 inch piece of stainless, black steel or rebar. Anything will work fine. Put a little bend and hook at the end. Use a vise, makes it a little easier. Measure out about 12 inches and then fashion a handle into the top, square, triangle, round, whatever you want to do. Whatever is excess, you just cut off and that'll work fine. A different option for that hook and hanging is a hook like this. This is a boot hook. Recently I was out buying some boots in the boot store. I saw these, I thought, oh, that would work great. Bought a pack, tried them out, and they worked fine. So if you've got a boot store around or if you see these online and you want to just have something that's ready made, this is this will work just as well. So hopefully we've given you a lot of great information and you're ready to take the steps you need to build your barrel barbecue. Okay, so hopefully we've given you all the information that you need to go ahead and start building your hook and cook barrel barbecue. But if we haven't, go ahead and inbox us and we'll try to answer your questions. Or if you want to get one from us, go ahead and inbox us and we'll go ahead and make that transaction happen. Also, if you would, click on the ads or watch the ads. We sure would appreciate it. And give us thumbs up on our videos. It would really help our promotions. And if you want to keep up to date on what we got going on, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Also, on Facebook, you can like us on Facebook slash Hook and Cook BBQ. I want to give a special thanks to RAH Digital Media for putting together these great videos. Be sure to check them out if you want to put together videos like this. I'm Stymie, and thanks for watching. Keeping it simple with Stymie.